Well, everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Avid Outdoors TV. We're out here this morning gonna set up and go do some waterfowl hunting. Like usual, I am running behind. Just gotta throw the decoys in the truck here quickly. And we'll be back in a minute. See you out in the field. Just got back in, there was two geese already in the setup. We walked in. some stuff today we go do some work on the farm just had a duck flying around here but I don't know where it went to let's see the seagulls now it's looking for land on some water there's a slough right behind me in that behind that tree back there so we're gonna pack her in here then we might do uh, throw one goose we got today Hearing geese honking, I don't see no seagulls. Well, might do uh, see it really annoying. Clean and cook later today, see if Tanner swings out, get the two of us going on it, and get that happening. Do the first one of those ever on this channel with our single goose of the hunt today. Here we go with the cleaning portion of this video. There you have it. Cleaned bird. Take this bad boy in the house. Wash her up. Welcome to the weekly Avid Outdoors TV feeder update. Feeder number one. Here we go. Austin, what do we got That's at feeder number one? Very formal. Uh, feeder number, is, is this one? Yeah, this is this, one. This is feeder this one. Is feeder one, but it's called, we called it bait two because we got rid of bait one. But bait two, we have a nice looking five by four on here. Yep. He's not bad. First three photos will be of him. I'm sure it's the same buck here. So yeah, hopefully we get, because he did come in on the daylight on the third one here 
And With around the, 7 p.m. Yeah, that clock's an hour off, and no matter what I do, it won't change. So it's about 7 o'clock at night with the fawns. And the doe, we didn't, must have been around somewhere. The doe but, shows up in some other pictures, but we just decided to grab this one. This is the best picture of him kind of looking in a sneak towards the camera. So uh, super nice, 5x4. Still in velvet. So yeah, hopefully... Next week when we check baits, because after that, after next bait check, which we usually do on Thursdays, it'll be Thursday the 12th, we'll check baits again here. And, and I do believe Sunday season opens. opens on that Sunday, so hopefully we can get him timed out when he's coming in and maybe get him in velvet, because that would be a nice, nice mount to get done in velvet. He's not a bad deer by any means. So hopefully... One of the next videos coming to you here will be bow hunting deer. But, nevertheless, on to the next critter. This is still bait two here. We got our little, I should say little, but our medium sized guy. Just only real good picture was him from behind. I'm sure it's just a little guy still that we got coming in there. Um, this deer I can't really identify just the way he's standing. Look at that brown tine. Look at that. It hooks over. You got the hooked over brown tine here. We should. Yeah, that's yeah, him. That's the big that's guy. That's the five again. by four again. Straight on view in the dark. Forgot I added that photo in. And then this guy, we named Archer. We showed you last week. We found him at the one bait that. No, wait. That's the same guy. That does not appear to be velvet, but he's got a hooked mm. over brow tine. Go back. That's velvet. That guy's wider. Yeah, and that's not velvet. So the one that we have next here is not in velvet. We had him show up last week as we were going to move bait number three. Uh, to a new location, same property, new location. Um, he snuck in one night, the night before, I believe it was, that we moved our feeder. And now we have him showing up on bait number one. Which, they're what? What would you say, mile and a half, two miles apart? Yeah, about two miles. So, yeah. There it is, our big deer for the week. The rest were a couple does here. You'll see in this little collage that we will shoot through here, and you will, yeah. So this is kind of the majority of what we're getting on the rest of the baits. And back to the cook. Okay, so here we are back. It is actually the next day here with Tanner, obviously. Where he's going to be cooking the thighs and the breasts I took out of that goose yesterday, which you just saw. And I, all I did was bring them in, wash them up, throw them in a bag for the fridge overnight. Just because I got busy, he was busy, couldn't line it up yesterday. But the next day, here is the cooking portion. Yes, welcome to the Catch and Clean Cook kitchen. So we got... Is that, oh, hunt? We didn't catch it, we kind of shot it. Hunt and cook. We're Hunt. The kill and cook kitchen. Because you have to kill everything to eat it. Because you can't eat live animals. Good talk. Yeah. Ah. No. Same people eat bugs. Kind of gross. Yeah. Anyways, we got ourselves a nice little can of the goose here. So we got some nice fatty thighs. Those are always tasty. And we got some nice big breasts. So we're going to do two types of goose. With the leg, with the thighs, sorry. We're going to spice them up with Cajun and garlic and then we'll put them in some white all-purpose flour here, Robin Hood and then uh, we'll shallow fry them in a little bit of veggie oil and then we're going to do the breasts in strips and since we're going to keep it Canadian we're going to do a little dusting of maple bacon clubhouse seasonings shout out to clubhouse if they want to give us a sponsor for our cleaning cooks 
And uh, so yeah, let's get this underway and start cooking. All right, so we're just gonna go. You recording still? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just gonna go over and inspect our meat here. Make sure that we get as much feathers and pin feathers off of it as we can. The cleaner, the better. We'll cut some of the sinew off. All right, not bad, not bad. Get a little bit of that gunk off of there. Okay, so first things first. We're gonna mix up our breading mixture and get our oil going on the stove. So first up, we'll wash our hands, get that started, then we'll start cutting breasts. That was a big towel. There was a dollar for four. Can't complain about that. All right. Well, let's get our oil going. We're All right. So we're gonna dump a little bit of flour. No exact measurements here. We're not precise by any means. That should do. Do you not see my shooting on this bird? That was precision. <laughs> so we got about two and a half cups of flour there. In case you want to be specific. Set our flour side, get it out of the way. Then we're gonna dump in a little bit of, where's the, there's the English side. Magic baking powder. I wanna make sure I said magic. And not some other word that starts with an M. It is brand new. That's a bonus. So I'm just gonna get this out of here. That should do. Then we're going to grab a fork. Just mix it well. Get that baking powder in amongst the flour. Baking powder and flour, you know, it's a good combination. It helps them get extra crispy. And with this way, you can bake it in the oven too on 450 with a little bit of lard melted down. Just a little bit. Or you can just bake it, dry your meat off, dust it with baking powder, and away you go. You got crispy bits. Tender, crispy, tasties. All right, so we're gonna pat dry our thighs. and into the garbage. Now, there we go, no chunks in there. If you're gonna season meat that you wanna eat, season it before you flour it. That is the ticket. Just give it a nice dusting. A little bit of garlic. and into the flour baking powder mixture. Yes, it is messy, just so you know. We'll work on all that flour. Make sure it's nice and evenly coated. And there we have one breaded goose thigh. So we'll get some paper towel sheets here. We'll go four, set that to the side for now. And we will lay our thigh on the paper towel so it is ready for the grease. Now the nice thing about waterfowl 
because it is foul, it's not poultry, so you don't got to cook it all the way to 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, so you can eat it rare if you'd like. And thigh number two. All right, rinse our hands. Oh, and our cutting board. All right, on to breast number one, or lobe, as they call it in the bird world. So we're just gonna slice nice thin strips. Why are you cutting it into strips? Because we are having goose strips. Oh, we even got some tenderloin here. Austin did a pretty good job cleaning that bird. Apparently. I try. How thick do you approximately do you want to try and cut this? I like to cut them around a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. They'll cook up a little bit better. We still want them to be uh, medium rare in the center. Or if you cut them thin enough, and uh, depending how you fry them, you could fry them right up. They will be a little bit chewier, but they're still tasty. So there's breast number one. We'll go for breast number two. We'll cut that tenderloin off there right now. There we go. We'll lay them all out. We'll grab our trusty paper towel. And we'll pat them dry. Now that looks like some good lunch. Maple bacon. Not too much, but I don't want to overpower the taste of the meat.
All right. We'll get us some fresh paper towel to lay down our strips on. And we're off to the races. I heard some ducks fly by. Maybe it's that one that was missed in yesterday's hunt. That was brutal. But we'll be right back when he's got these all braided up. Got the tasty goodness here in the form of Canadian goose thighs. Oil is around temperature since our thermometer crapped the bed. So we're just gonna lay these in there. Oh yeah. Nice and gentle. Tuck them away. Cover that up because you know we don't wanna get burnt. We'll see you in five. In about five-ish minutes. Oil was at 350, just so you know. I'm just gonna top up the oil, let it go for a couple minutes here, then we'll get our strips in. Oops. Time to eat some thighs while the strips are cooking. It's gonna be tasty. Should be tasty. Your thigh, sir. My thigh. Just be here. I don't like touching elbow. I like my elbow room. I do too. Yes. That's good. Really good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I've got some of that nice fat. Nice fat. Still a little bit of red in there. Still not even see that. Yeah, that's good right there. That's really good. Salt ready. Round two. Round two. Goose breast strips. Rest strips. Maple bacon. Maple bacon. Breast Get strips. yourself some of that. Dig in. Ooh, nice and juicy. Oh yeah. Nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not too overpowering. No. Nope. Still taste it. Tastes good. Get a little bit of hint of that maple bacon. Darn good. Oh yeah. Well, that's as good a time as any. Thanks for watching another episode of Avid Outdoors. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share with your friends, whatever you need to do. And don't forget to turn on the bell icon for notifications. And follow us on Instagram. You get photos. Try to get them a day or two before the video goes out or earlier that day or to try to go out sooner and other videos of when we're just out doing stuff not recording. So hey, 
Have a good one. And as always, stay avid. Stay avid.